If you're anything like me, the best way to cure homesickness is through food. Back when I was living in Japan, I was craving Malaysian food every single day. The problem was, however, none of them were good. Until one day, my friend mentioned that he had this at an event. I had to find out if it was good or not, so that's exactly what I did. Located in West Tokyo, there's a little shop called Malay Fuko. Now, unfortunately, it's not the easiest to find as it's kind of tucked underground. But all you need to know is once you reach this building right here, there will be a sign with some squiggly lines on it. Once you step into the restaurant, you immediately notice that something is kind of different. The decor, the way things are laid out, and even just how bubbly the owner is. It all makes you feel like you've kind of gone back in time, you know, back when you were young. And your friends kind of you know invited you over for dinner at their house now i wouldn't know what that feels like because uh i don't have friends anyways it all feels very warm and fuzzy and we haven't even gone to the food yet Now, I'm not a very picky eater, as you can probably tell looking at my physique. But you know what I am allergic to? Food with no damn taste. So right off the bat, we are starting off with a beautiful plate of nasi karabu with some curries accompanying it. So what exactly is this nasi karabu? It's basically blue rice mixed with curries, meats, vegetables, honestly anything really. I mean, you could probably eat it with Pop-Tarts to be honest. Actually, that's not that bad of an idea. And no, I know what some of you guys might be thinking. It's not from these guys, okay? Because you definitely won't be feeling blue after eating this. The blue color actually comes from this specific flower right here. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna even try to pronounce that name. But yeah, it's basically flower juice. And let me tell you something, it is. Spectacular. I have been wanting to eat this for so long. Oh my god. <laughs> Just the different types of curry mixed with the rice. It is such a match made in heaven. Every single meat is slow cooked to perfection. Every single curry takes like hours to like slow cook. The rice just perfectly soaks up all this curry, all this flavor, and it just becomes this absolutely amazing combination. Actually having it myself, I felt like I was transported back home to a roadside stall run by auntie. And as if that weren't enough, the next dish blew me away. Just as I was chowing down my plate of nasi kandar, the owner handed me a plate of satay. So for those of you who don't know what satay is, it's similar to yakitori, which is, you know, the Japanese skewers. So oftentimes with satay, you usually cook it with a variety of spices, including turmeric, which is what kind of gives it that yellow tint to it. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Dan, doesn't charring cause you cancer? And to that I say, why yeah, so man. weak? So weak. But seriously though, who cares as long as it's delicious? Now unfortunately, I forgot to record myself eating this because I'm a little dumb dumb duh. See, the tricky part about satay is it's kind of hard to nail unless you have this kind of coal fire grill. And the reason why is the fire and the smoke is kind of what gives satay its smoky aroma and that crispy outer layer. Now the one made in this restaurant is kind of similar to other restaurants. They kind of just put it on a pan and fry it. But somehow, I don't know what black magic she used, but the owner managed to get the marinade so right. It literally tasted bomb as bomb. And the meat was oozing with juices instead of being dry and kind of sad. As for the sauce, which we call kacang, it definitely could right. be better, I guess. It's basically a peanut-based sauce that we usually use as a dip for the satay, but I was pleasantly surprised as it was pretty accurate to the original taste, despite kind of lacking that texture and a little bit of bite. Overall, it was pretty good, so no complaints there. Now for the final dish, this is something I'm a bit more mixed about. So she gave me a bowl of asam laksa. It's basically a noodle-based dish whereby the soup is actually cooked using mackerel. Also, you add tamarind into the soup itself, which is what gives it that kind of like tangy, soury kind of aftertaste. It's got just the right amount of sourness and that fishy aftertaste, which is 
Yes, in fact, a good thing. I'd say if you're a fan of sweet and sour foods or just like sour foods in general, give it a shot because it's honestly pretty good. But uh, yeah, it's not really for me. <laughs> That is really good. This 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 Cure the hangover stamp off. But yeah, incredible taste, just not for me. Just like my taste in women. So that was essentially it for the entire experience. And I gotta say, whilst this was my second time being there, it still never ceased to amaze me how amazing just her skill in cooking is. I got to try Malay foods, Chinese foods. All these dishes have vastly different taste profiles and like methods of cooking. The fact that this one chef managed to cook all of these dishes almost perfectly, despite being outside of Malaysia, where these ingredients are pretty hard to come by, that is just... Incredible. So I took upon myself to take up this incredible opportunity to interview the chef and she was kind enough to spare me some minutes of her time to kind of answer some of the questions I had regarding all of this. I don't know why I keep calling her chef. Her name is Elaine. But yeah, this is a highlight of the interview I had with Chef Elaine. Why did you decide to open a Malaysian restaurant in Japan? What are the lessons and challenges you have faced? Since opening the restaurant, uh, I went to Japan, learned how to speak Malay. First, I was not a Singaporean. I was twenty years old. 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 What do you feel makes your Malaysian restaurant different from the others? Because there are many people who want to eat Malaysian food. Some people are very proud of their food. But you can eat the taste of the food. I myself, when I went to the United States, I also want to eat Malaysian food. You can eat the taste of the food. I also have that feeling. I just want to make your own food. I 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 want to make your own food. What is the biggest challenge you face in your industry? How do you maintain a good relationship with your customers? Sew,好多笑。Sew用得得啦,你要sew,sew用,對人地,我會來毛到我們講嘢,咁呢,人哋會對你對翻你好啦,就不然佢好噶。我哋日本人啊,你對好人哋對你更加好啊。最緊要一
country's food and I want to promote it, but also because of people like her that just really, really inspire other people. It's that unrelenting spirit of just wanting to make something work no matter what the obstacles are. So if you live in Japan and have a hankering for something different and just a little bit out of the ordinary, Malay Huko is definitely a restaurant I would highly recommend you check out. Now, if you excuse me, I'll go munch on some of these ear biscuits because I hear they're pretty good. Hey, did I get you with that? Did I, did, no? No? Okay, never mind. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll see myself out with this.